Well, good morning, everyone. It's getting closer to noon around here than morning, but it's about 10 o'clock. It's about 54 degrees outside. We got some cool temperatures coming tonight. Uh, the forecast hasn't changed this morning. It's gonna be down to 34 degrees. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll have a lot of work to do this evening. Coming up here right now to get the doors opened on the greenhouses. A little more air circulate in here. And I've got some uh, pruning and trellising to do on the tomatoes. Thought I'd bring you along for that. So let's take a look at the tomatoes. See how they're coming along? Let's look at them. So this little guy is behind because he is planted later. But as you can see, the rest of them are looking great. Now I'm going to do some suckering. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what a sucker is, this is a sucker coming out of the crotch of the main stem down there right there so I need to do some suckering because these are single liter tomatoes and I need to do some clipping up trellising here we got we got a grass coming in And there looks like a rogue tomato from last year. Weed. Weed. So, this is what we use. These are the type of tomato clips we use. I've talked about in other videos. There's clear ones too that are lighter duty. And there's different diameters. These seem to work out very well for us. So... As you can see here so let's see if I can do this one-handed sorry about all the shaking so we want this under a limb that has already angled out if we put it under one like this one over here that's still angled up it doesn't work as well so we will clip this right here a little hard one-handed my apologies it snaps together you see how the string is in the joint that's what holds it from sliding up and down so, let me show you one more. So, probably should have brought the camera stand, but I didn't. Okay, so, same thing. Give you a bird's eye view here. We will slide the clip over the string and then we're going to slide it up the string. Sorry, my finger's in the way. To just under the limb. Now we don't want to catch the fruit truss that's there. So we're going to go over the fruit truss. See our flower truss there where the fruit's going to be? We're going to go over it and under the other one because we don't want to cause that fruit truss when it gets heavy to break over the clip. This way it's got room to do what it needs to do. <clears throat> okay, let me get these tied up and then we'll come back and look at the suckering. Okay, I have got them all 
tied up, trellised. If you ain't seen our other videos, go back and watch them. But we use the roller hook on a 12 and a half gauge wire. But see the wind is blowing the tomatoes, so that'll be pollinating them. Now if you got your greenhouse sealed up, just come by and shake the <clears throat> plant a little bit, just grab it. Don't get carried away. That'll help it pollinate. You can just tap the string. So, <clears throat> let's talk about suckers. Now, <clears throat> we prune and tie up, get the suckers off these plants about every seven to ten days. Um, if I was running a heavier fertilizer dose, it would have to be done every seven days. But we run a medium fertilizer, and today they will get fertilized. As you can see, we let the ground dry out. Now, these plants are getting big enough that we'll start pruning off the bottom, too. And, uh, I've already took the very bottom scaffold leaves off of these. So now we're going to step up to the next scaffold and remove anything close to the ground. Um, that These plants are plenty big enough. If I take off this leaf, that, that limb, and this limb over here, I still got one, two, three, four, five, six limbs on this tree. This, well, you can call it a tree. Um, these guys are, well, we got one, two, three, almost four foot tall. So, And I do have some that are four foot tall. That's a four foot variety. Now, I've got multiple varieties in here. This one, this one, this one, that one, and I think the next one and maybe the next one are all Pink Wonders. Uh, Pink Wonders is a uh, <clears throat> greenhouse variety. Uh, heirloom style that would replace pink brandywine. Pink brandywine disease is real easy and that's what we don't want. So let me get my trusty knife out here. Y'all bear with me here while I try to open it. Okay so this is a sucker that I will leave for a couple of days because I am going to have another video I'll show you how to root these so you can see right there in the crotch of the truss and I cut this out of it now it's basically a new tomato plant that's how it grows and that's what our other video is going to be about now I will take these. I'm going to just do the pink wonders right now, and then I'm going to come back up and do another one. So that way I don't get them mixed up. And I'll put that in that jar of water just to make sure it don't dehydrate. It shouldn't no longer than I'm going to be up here. But now here is the extreme. You see here? There is my main trunk. Sorry. There is my main trunk. And this is the sucker. Yes, that whole big thing is a sucker. If I let that stay there, that will become a whole new plant. But we are going to remove it. It helps the plant breathe. And keeps disease pressure down. Now these small ones, sorry, you can snap off. I still usually use a knife, but it can be done. And you can use scissors. Garden, little pair of garden snips, the little small ones. You don't want nothing big in here. And they make some specialty stuff to do this with. But they grow fast. But we want to focus on these guys. 
we want to focus on these blooms. We want the energy to go into producing fruit, not producing trusses. Because we're growing these up this stem so that they can grow fast and produce fruit quick and put all their energy into, their, into the fruit and keep disease pressure down. So, all right, let me do some pruning. I have finished one side, so I'm gonna show you pruned versus unpruned. I think you can look and see how we have centralized the growth of the tomato and took care of all the extras. We got rid of the leaves on the bottom. This is a little sucker that I'll prune off probably come Monday. That'll probably come off. <clears throat> I left a few. But if you look down through here, I'm not sure if you can tell. I can. But this side is more visible, more airflow. This side is just leaves. And that's what both of them looked like until just now when we cleaned it up. And it would look even different if these would lay out like they're supposed to but they will so I'm happy with that now I gotta do the other side oh yeah and these are my Carolinas I got a whole jar full of them I got a ton of the pink wonders so all right let's get this pruned we are all done I took out a few leaves that were a little ugly looking. Don't know if it was heat scorch or what. Um, but everything looks like it's coming along. That little classic red beefsteak is an experiment to see how it does in the greenhouse. Um, but it was planted later than these, so it's about two weeks behind. So it should just be starting to get its roots going. Overall, I'm happy with the look of these. Um, no disease seems to be going on yet, so we can keep it that way and keep them going vertical. We'll uh, be happy. I am not sure why this end is all smaller than the middle to that end. Unless it's drafty at the a little drafty at the door on cold nights. Not sure. It's a good question. We'll find out. Alright. Well I hope that this has helped you on trellising tomatoes. And we'll follow this as it goes up. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, hit that notification icon, the little bell, so that as we add to this series and show you what's happening and where things are going, you will be able to see it as soon as it comes up. We've got some older videos if you want to take a look at them. Uh, i got videos on how we planted this and what we did there. So, all right. I hope this has been good. Take care. Have a wonderful, blessed day.